Buttered bread. Tom Thomas, it's not right to eat when you're playing a game. I know your mom told you that. Come on, stop distracting me. Oh no, that's the game. Now that's what you call Murphy's Law, Nolik. <laughs> no, that's the law of buttered bread. The law of buttered bread. <laughs> There's no way that's a real law. People say that bread always lands butter side down. Scientists laugh at that, but there is a grain of truth in it. First of all, a sandwich usually falls from the low height of a table, and so it only has time to make a half turn. Second, the side of the bread with the butter is heavier, and that pulls it towards the ground. And third, people remember the bad things that happened to them. So, they believe that buttered bread always lands the wrong way. That's just goofy. I don't believe in that law. It's true, and not just for buttered bread, but any open-faced sandwich. Then let's do an experiment. We got tons of food in here. We just cover some bread with it, and then throw it. All right, let's do it. Well, jelly side down. Uh-huh. And the cheese went down. And the chocolate spreads out of luck, too. The bologna didn't do any better. Do you believe me now? Not yet. Let's keep going. We should try some other methods of throwing. Oh, that's everything. There's nothing left. No, there's still some turkey. Where did you see that? Here it is. Take some from this plate instead. Your mom already cooked it. Hey, turkey, show them how you're supposed to fall. Aha! Didn't I, uh, tell ya? You vandals! Why are you throwing food all over the place? It's simply awful. Hey, give it back! Please, we're testing the law of buttered bread. You gotta be kidding. Your mom is gonna love you for that. Can you please put the sandwich on a plate already? It's too heavy for us to keep holding it up. Good. There you go. Tom Thomas, do you have any idea at all how nutritious that turkey is? And delicious, I'd imagine. And turkey is a healthy food that has lots of protein, vitamins, and what do you call them? Micro elements. That's not all. Eating that turkey could make you grow. If you eat that sandwich, you could grow a centimeter. I think that's true. Yeah, and it'll give you some extra strength, which you're gonna need when you clean up your kitchen. Humans eat food not only to make them strong, but also to grow and develop. Take a look at all these different foods. Do you think they have anything at all in common? Well, actually, they do. All foods contain nutrients like proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. Combining them properly is the science of nutrition. Foods with fats and carbohydrates give humans energy, while those with protein are essential for helping children grow. People love to eat food that is delicious, fresh, and assorted. Try to eat all sorts of good foods like salads and soups, cereals, potatoes, vegetables, and meats, and not just sandwiches. But when it's time for a little snack, a sandwich can be just right, and it's so easy to make. to all of our bread. There's only one slice left. I made an experiment. A real one. I see. Well, science requires sacrifice. And there's no doubt that scientific experience is way better than playing with the phone all day. Right? Mm-hmm. Can I have another piece of turkey? I don't know why, but I'm really hungry today. Hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
No, that's what I call Murphy's Law. No! That's what they call the law of buttered bread, Dad. Did you hear? The law is the law. The gramophone. And that's a photograph of my mom when she was little. <laughs> she sure looked happy, didn't she? Because parents were all happy when they were children. But then they grow up and start getting all gloomy and as boring as can be. Oh, what's this, do you know? A song about a screw? It's total nonsense. Nonsense? It's about a screw, which means it's practically about fixies. Why don't we listen to it and find out? If it's good, we can all dance together. How do you listen to this thing? Like this? Why don't we try to use the player? We won't fit in there. Look, right here it says gramophone record. See? So we need to find a gramophone player. Find what? Let's go to Grandpus. Grandpus, we found a song about a screw we want to hear. We're looking for a player for a gramophone record. Ah, I understand. What you need is a gramophone. A gramophone is an old appliance that was made for playing back sound that was recorded onto records. If you want to turn on a gramophone, you need to turn the handle to wind up its spring. The spring makes the record spin. Then, a needle is placed on top of the record. And as it moves through the groove on the record, it shakes a little, which makes a diaphragm, a sort of mini drum skin, start to vibrate. The big horn of the gramophone then makes the sound louder, and we hear a voice or music. The most amazing thing is that a gramophone doesn't have an electric motor or any electronics. That's right, you don't need electricity for a gramophone to play back the sound that's recorded on a record. That's because a gramophone is an entirely mechanical wonder. If you want to know, there is a gramophone in the office of Tom Thomas's dad. It's on the desk. Great, let's go. <laughs> Thanks would be nice. I can't find the on button. There is no on button. You need to grab that handle and turn it. Now take that thing and put it down onto the record. Hmm, it's not playing. Look, there's no needle in there. And where can we get one from? We can make it. Do you have any nails around here? Is this good? That'll be great. Verda, are you ready? Totally. Better cover your eyes. Working, listen. A little screw went for a run, and now without this little part, everything just <laughs> falls apart. If you think a screw is nothing, take it out, but just beware. Everything will break without a, with no little screws in there. The bulldozer was a strong one, until there was a thud. And then the mighty giant fell straight into the mud. music playing. It's a gramophone record. Gramophone? I thought it was broken. We fixed this old... Uh, not we. I fixed this thing. Really? What a wonderful boy I've got. Other kids are breaking things and you fixed them. What do you say we play that record once more? I used to love it so much when I was little. The mighty crane was working until there was a pop. And then the mighty giant gave out and lost its top. Five, four, three, two, one. A little screw went for a run. And now without this little part, everything just falls apart. If you think a screw is nothing, 
Everything take it up, but just beware. Everything will break without them, with no little screws in there. If you think a screw is nothing, take it up, but just beware. Everything will break without them, with no little screws in there. Tom Thomas's mom really dances super. Yeah, she knows how to have a good time, even though she's a grown up. If you think the parrot. Adisa, do you want a cracker? Wow, Tom Thomas, who is that? Simka, Nolik, this is Adisa. My dad brought him from Africa. <laughs> <gasps> I can't believe it, you've got a real parrot. Can he talk? My dad said that he can, but I haven't heard him yet. Well, let's see if he can. Okay, say, Adisa's a good bird. No, he should learn my name. That would be awesome. Adisa, say, Nolik. That's my name. He doesn't want to talk about you, Nolik. Hmm, maybe he doesn't know how to speak human language. know any languages at all. Then how can he talk? Parrots can repeat many of the different sounds that they hear. For instance, a dog's bark or the ring of the phone. Parrots can also mimic words or even whole sentences of human speech. But parrots don't understand the meaning of the words they are saying. They just repeat them like a music player. Hey, hello. Hey, hello. That's why you won't be able to have a real conversation with a parrot, even if it's the kind of parrot that can talk. All right, then let's have him repeat something. Hey, Adisa, Tadish, it's the Fixie's special sign. Say it, Fixie's had a special sign, Tadish. Oh, my dad is back. Let's hide, quickly. Hi there. Well, how's it going? You two talking to each other yet? I can't get him to say anything at all. You can't? Hmm. Adisa, how are you? Adisa's a good parrot. <gasps> he wouldn't say anything before. Eh, he's used to talking around me. Adisa's a good parrot. Nolik, that's my name. <laughs> hmm? Whose name is Nolik? Uh, no. He was saying he's got no luck in this game. What kind of game? <laughs> Let's hide! Quickly! <gasps> hide! Uh, we were playing hide-and-seek. <laughs> With the parrot? Uh-huh. <sighs> <sighs> Fixies have a special sign! <gasps> Fixies have a special sign! <laughs> what? Fixies? A special sign? Uh, no. It was physics. It's a special science. Uh, that's what we're studying about right now at school. You know, how special oh. physics is. Wow, that's impressive. Um, well, keep up the good work, son. Whew. The ability to repeat what humans say is not something unique to only parrots. Crows, starlings, and other animals can do it too. And besides animals, there are also machines that can repeat human speech. For instance, when you call somewhere and hear, leave your message after the tone, what you're hearing is a voicemail machine using a recorded voice to answer the call. Another example is the voice on trains and buses that is used to announce the stops. Those voices are usually recordings that are repeated over and over. Today, there are also artificial voices on computers, tablets, and smartphones that can read text and say it out loud. But even if a machine knows what you are saying, it can't know why you are saying it. Only people can figure that out. And Fixies, of course. Huh? Tom Thomas, you're a hero. You really wiggled your way out of that one. And Adisha, bad parrot. He almost gave up our secret. Be careful with that parrot. I get it. Adisha, listen, you. Forget everything we said. And don't ever say no look. 
Okay. Yeah, nothing about the Fixies at all. Yeah, so if you meet a Fixie, please don't let their secret out. Got it? Oh, he's nodding. Looks like he understands. Let's get out of here so he'll forget about us as soon as possible. So if you meet a Fixie, please, don't let their secret out. Tadish, Tadish, Tadish. The pack a -Mat. Uh, Simka, can I have the pack a -Mat? I'd like to practice with it a little before the exam. Take it! <gasps> You're really good with that thing. Good. I couldn't be any worse with it. I wanted a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Actually, you were pretty close there. He did manage to get the hose, at least. <laughs> this is not at all funny. In order to get a tool out of a pac a man a fixie must not only press the button on his chest, but he must also clearly picture exactly the tool he needs. By the time they are adults, this is easy for Fixies to do. But while they're children, they must study hard to master this important skill. As Fixies learn about new tools, they take exams to prove they know how they work. And if they pass an exam, the new tool is added to their pack of mats. And there's no end to what you can find inside. Screwdrivers, hammers, ladders, vacuums, and even soldering irons. But many of the tools that Fixies use look quite different from the ones that humans have. And the reason for this is very simple. It's because Fixies have to fix appliances that are much bigger than they are. Uh, I just wish I knew which tool was going to be on that exam. I got it! You just stay right here! Grandpus! What? Um, on the exam, which tool are you going to ask about? It's a secret. Uh, it's too bad. But I'm sure you can keep a secret, right? Of course. Then I'll tell you. Today's exam is on pliers, you see? You won't tell anyone, will you? Not a chance. Uh, I'll never pass it. You will! He's gonna ask about pliers. Huh? How could you know that? It's a secret. <laughs> okay, Digit. See if you can get the pliers out of there. A pair of pliers is a great tool indeed. To grab and turn things, it's the tool that you need. Just be careful how you use them. All your fingers, you could bruise them. Pliers are Be careful how you use them, or your fingers, you could bruise them. Pliers are a great tool indeed. Good going. You got it. Thanks a lot, Nolik. It's not really me you should be thanking. <sighs> Grandpus, thanks a lot. For what? The secret. What secret? About the pliers. Oh, that. You know, I picked a new topic. Um, I decided that a hammer will be the tool. A hammer? Only it's a secret. I remember! <laughs> the topic I changed! It's a hammer! You sure about that? Totally. All right. I'll try to do it. A hammer is a great tool in... gonna pass. That's only if he asks me about a hammer. I'll be right back. <gasps> Grandpus, it's a hammer for sure? Nah. A hammer would be way too easy for those kids. So now it is a drill. A drill? But only... It's a secret! <laughs> <laughs> now I know. There's no doubt about it at all. It's a drill! <sighs> a drill is such a great tool in Great tools 
Yes, yes, indeed. That's all. That's enough of this. I'll just go and take the exam. Yeah. Digit, come on in. Um, Professor, well, what do you want to ask me on today's exam? Nothing. You already passed. What? You mean you're not going to ask me anything at all? No need. You're excellent at getting tools out of a pack -a mat But how could you know that? That's a secret. And we Fixies sure know how to keep secrets. The Piggy Bank. Mwah. Tom Thomas, why are you throwing away your money? That's not what I'm doing. I'm storing it. This is a piggy bank. Oh, here's another coin. I don't like its snout. That's one very suspicious looking pig. Are you positive your money's safe with her? Don't worry. Whatever I put into my bank here is not getting back out. This piggy bank won't give up a cent. You greedy piggy! Come on, Nolik. Simka must have taught you about how banks work. Humans came up with the idea of piggy banks because they wanted a good place to save their coins. For storing lots of money, people use a safe, a large metal box with a very strong lock. Now that kind of piggy bank's almost impossible to break open. The biggest safes are in banks. Banks use them to store their customers' money and other valuables. There are even safes in banks that are whole rooms. You'd need an awful lot of change to fill up one of these piggy banks. So why are you saving up all this money? For roller skates. How much more do you need to save? I don't know. I can't see if there's enough in there. Then just go and open it. But there's no way to do that. The only way is to smash it real hard. So smash it. Nyeh, -uh, forget it. I have nothing to put my money into. But what if there's already enough for roller skates? And what if there's not? All right, then I guess I'll count your money for you. Tidish! Oh, whoa! Tom Thomas, you've got a fortune in here! There are many different kinds of money, and they're not just coins, either. Long ago, people paid each other with shells and squirrel skins and even parrot feathers. And, of course, metal coins are more convenient than any of those things. And paper money is even more convenient than coins. One piece of paper can be worth as much as a hundred coins, or even a thousand. All that needs to be done is to print more zeros on it, and that's all. Today, humans can pay for almost anything without paper money or coins whatsoever. If you have enough money in the bank, you can just walk into a store, give the cashier your bank card, and take your purchase home with you without handing over any money. The bank knows how much money you spend, and they pay the store for you later. It's so convenient. So, will you count them? Here we go. One coin! And two coins? Wait, Nolik, what one coin, two coins? What are you counting? You have to add together all of the different numbers. Huh. You should have told me that before. Uh, I never learned how to. Yeah, that's what I figured. Come on out. Hut! 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 What can I do? What if you try stacking the coins so they're like stairs? That's what I'm already doing! Oh, oh, ah! Why don't you try tilting the piggy bank over? Hang on. Stop! I'm getting buried! Put it back the way it was before! This is worse! Ah! Just put the pig down! No, like, hang in there, please. I'll get some thread and lower it down to you. What? Just smash your piggy bank. But I like it. And what, you don't like me? Of course I like you. Well, who do you like more? You're my friend, aren't you? 
Of course. Then smash the piggy bank, will you? Okay, Nolik. I'm gonna do it. Are you okay? I'm okay. <sighs> Thank you, Tom Thomas. Thank you, my friend. No problem. At least now you can count up how much money you have. Nah, there's no reason to do it. There's no way it's enough for roller skates. You sure? What a shame. But now you've got all of this money here to buy a piggy bank that's totally brand new. The elevator. Uh. Papus, Masia, we gotta hurry. How come? Tom Thomas is going to see the circus. Uh, and what? We want to go with him, can we? The answer is no. Just you kids without supervision. Who said no supervision? His parents are taking him there. Well, be careful, don't worry. They won't even notice us. Hmm. Well, if Tom Thomas's parents will be there. Hooray! We can go! Wait a second! I didn't even say yes yet! Yeah. Simka Nolik, where are you? We gotta hurry up! Tom Thomas, it's time to go! I'll be right there! We're ready! Climb into my hood! Ha! Huh, I know who's going to the circus today! Whoa! Huh? What just happened? I think that the elevator broke down. Don't you worry. Mm -hmm. Emergency operator. <clears throat> um, uh, we got stuck in the elevator. Understood. Please wait. We'll have the elevator fixed within the hour. That long? That means we won't get to the circus on time. Tom Thomas, we'll go get Papus and Masia. I'm sure they can fix it. People need elevators to help them get to the upper floors of tall buildings. When someone steps into an elevator and presses a button, the elevator's electrical engine starts up. It pulls the cable that is attached to the elevator cabin, and the elevator goes to the desired floor. The cable hangs over a wheel, and it usually has a heavy counterbalancing weight attached to the other end of it. This counterweight balances the elevator and helps the electric motor do its job. Hmm, I wonder what the reason is. I think I see something over there that got stuck. Looks like you found the reason. We gotta go and fix it now or we'll never get to the circus on time. You know, we can just have it right here. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the Fixie Spectacular. And now your attention please on the high wire. Our very own aerial gymnasts. Next act, feats of strength. It won't come out. I know how to fix it. With a death-defying circus act, point your eyes up. Marcia, where are you going? Up to the electric motor. Do you know the right way to behave yourself inside of an elevator? First of all, Small children should never get into an elevator by themselves. They should only go in with their parents or other adults they know well. When getting onto an elevator, the adult should always enter first and then the child. When it's time to get out, it's the other way around. First the child leaves and then the adult. 
If you are taking a dog onto an elevator, make sure its tail and leash are completely inside so they don't get stuck in the door. And there's one more thing. If the elevator suddenly stops for some unknown reason, don't try to break out of it yourself. Press the button that calls the emergency operator and wait for help from the elevator repairmen. Or the Fixies. I reached the motor! Turn it on! Oh, they fixed it. That was quick. Now we'll make it on time. There was no need to worry. Stop! Ugh. It's way too high! Tom Thomas went to the circus without us. There's no need to get that upset, Nolik. Our circus is as good as theirs. Right, Papus? Of course it is! Thank you! Thank you, uh, to who? What do you mean, who? The elevator repairman. Please don't let their secret out.